Hi everyone, thank you so much for practicing with me today. My name is Cassandra and this yoga class is meant to be something that you can do when you're short on time, but you still really want to feel like you had a full body activation. So it's still a pretty powerful practice, definitely best suited for intermediate students. And I am using two blocks for our class today. And you'll notice the way I have them set up. I just have them at the top of my mat, on the edges of my mat. Basically, I'm, we're gonna be putting our hands on top of them. So go the width that you normally have when you're in downward facing dog, for example. So a really great full body flow to work on strength, a little bit of endurance, and of course, we'll give ourselves some yummy stretches to also improve flexibility. And more than anything, I want you to think of this as a flow to kind of get you to focus in on yourself. This might be a bit of a mental challenge as well. Whenever we turn up the physical intensity, that's when our internal dialogue can maybe spiral or get a little bit out of hand. So even when things get tough, see what you're telling yourself. You know, what is the story that's playing in your mind? And can you just make it a little bit more positive and a little bit lighter overall. Okay, we don't have long, so we're just right away gonna get into it. We're gonna do cat and cow with our hands on the blocks. So I have my thumbs and my little fingers on the outer edges of the blocks and then my three middle fingers in the middle. I'm directly underneath my shoulders with my hips on top of my knees and just cat and cow from here. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, tailbone up exhale push and round and you might find that doing this with blocks helps to give you a little bit more space especially through your upper back so you can just breathe into that space you're creating two more like this Inhale, nice back bend. And exhale to contract. And now coming back to your neutral tabletop pose, you're going to extend your right leg back behind you, roll that right hip down. It's a little harder, I find, to do this when we have our hands up higher on some blocks. You're really going to have to use and strengthen through your glutes. And now go ahead and let that right hip open up as you transition your body weight onto your left hand and reach your right arm up to the sky. Squeeze to lift it up a tiny bit more and very carefully retransition right hand to your block, roll that hip down, and you're gonna step your right foot forward in between the blocks, in between your palms at the top of the mat. Just take a nice stretch here, melting your hips forward and down. Grounding your palms on the blocks, you're gonna send your right knee back to meet the left one, so where we were before, and find your modified plank pose. So I'm leaning my hips forward, and we're gonna bend down, exhale, Inhale, push back up and send your hips back into a variation of child's pose. And I really want you to get like a nice shoulder stretch when you're doing this. So we're gonna inhale, modified plank. Exhale, little push up. Inhale, press up. Exhale, press it back. Let's do one more here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale building up some heat back into our tabletop pose so firm up through your core and we're going to extend that left leg up and back it might not be going as high as it normally does when you don't have your blocks underneath you it's a little bit harder to do this one i find with the blocks but very effective and then you can let your hips start to open up so i'm stacking my left hip over my right one my left shoulder over the right I'm just finding a little bit more lift through that right shoulder because of the space the block creates. Look down to help you with balance. We're going to find our low lunge, a variation of our Anjaniasana. 
where I have my left knee over my ankle and I'm just pressing and melting the hips down, getting into the hip flexors. And let's release, bring that left knee back to meet the right. Modified plank pose, a little chaturanga. Press back up and shift your hips back. Two more like this, building up that heat. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale back. One more. Keep your elbows in as you lower and as you push up. Last one, press it back. Let's find our downward facing dog still on our blocks. So I love doing down dog on blocks. It really helps to elongate through your arms to find lots of space through your spine. And you might find that it's a lot easier to get your heels down as well. We're gonna go from our down dog into plank pose five times. So inhale, ripple all the way forward through to plank. Keep your hips down. Exhale, up and back, push. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. Three more. Inhale, keep your hips low. Exhale, last one, we're gonna hold plank pose, inhale. From here, go ahead and lift your right leg off the floor and we're gonna tap the toes down for five, four, three, two, one. Downward facing dog. Back to plank pose, lift the left leg, tap the toes down for five, four, three, two, one. One, downward facing dog. Reach your right leg up, bend your right knee, open up your hip. <sighs> Step your right foot in between your hands to the top of the mat and just straighten that right leg as you fold. So a wide variation of our pyramid pose. into your extended side angle. So you're going to bend into your front knee and spin your back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat. Keep your hand on your block and just reach bicep along the ear. Bring your left hand back onto the block that's on the left. Lift your back heel off the mat and narrow your stance a little bit so that you can really get all four corners of your back foot on the floor. Revolve triangle. You might wanna have your block up a little bit higher for this. I know this is a hard pose for me, so I'm lifting it up. And then I'm gonna reach my right arm up to the sky. Big twist. One more breath and release into your standing splits. You can do this with or without the blocks. So whatever you prefer to hold on to, left leg rises. Ragdoll or just forward fold at the top of the mat so we can find a little flow, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale to fold. Press to stand, reach your arms up overhead, palms come together to touch. Exhale, draw the hands down, full sun salutation, inhale. And exhale. I'm gonna keep my hands on the block as I inhale, and I'm gonna step back to plank pose and flow through chaturanga with the blocks there. And we all meet back in our downward facing dog, ready to do the sequence on the second side. Left leg rises, bend your knee, open up your hip. And we'll find that wide variation of our, pi our pyramid pose. So left foot steps through, straighten your left leg and fold. <sighs> it's really normal if your back right heel is not touching the ground. Try to just relax here in the pose. 
And let's find our extended side angle. So you're going to bend into that front knee, spin your back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat. And with my left hand on the block, I'm going to reach my right arm up and over. And I'm kind of pushing my left thigh into my arm a little. into your revolved triangle pose bring that right hand back down lift the back heel and bring that foot in a little bit so you can shorten your stance maybe lift the block under your right hand up and then twist left arm reaches to the sky And release, shift the blocks back so they're neutral, and then find your way into your standing splits. You can do this on or off the blocks. Fold forward, halfway lift, flat back, release, press to stand, exhale. And find your flow, inhale, fold down, release. Halfway lift with your hands on the block, step back. We all meet, downward facing dog. <sighs> Stretch it out one last time here. And let's bring our knees down to the mat. You can move your props off to the side. We won't need them right away. And we're just going to find ourselves in dolphin pose. So you can come down onto your forearms a little bit more narrow than your shoulders. So I want to be able to like really grab a hold of my upper arms, flatten my palms, tuck the toes under, and lift the hips up. And once you're in this dolphin pose, you're going to lift your heels up as high as they can go and just go ahead and lift the right leg up. Maybe bend your right knee, open up your hip, straighten the right leg, lower it down, switch sides, left leg up, bend your left knee, open up your hip, straighten the left leg, release it down, camel pose, drop your knees, Lift up through your chest and we're going to lean back. So you can have your toes curled under or pointed back behind you. Either supporting yourself with your hands towards your lower back or releasing your palms towards your heels. Try to keep your hips pressing forward. <sighs> And let's release, just sit back. Hips to your heels, hands on your lap. And you can move your legs out of the way. We're starting to wind things down. Just extend your right leg out in front of you and keep your left foot to the inside of your thigh. You can stretch up nice and tall here as you breathe in and fold, exhale. Coming all the way back up. Second side, left leg out in front of you. Right foot comes in, find some length, and then try to keep that length even as you hinge and fold. I'm letting myself round a little bit through my spine here, but I'm still focusing on pulling and pressing down through the back of my left leg. And let's lift on up. We're going to lower, coming into supported bridge pose. You just need one block for this one. 
And we're just gonna keep it on its lowest level just to stretch out the hip flexors a little bit so you can prop yourself with a block underneath your hips. And then pull your right knee in towards your chest, straighten your left leg. <sighs> Three more breaths right here. And very gently switch sides by bringing your left knee in and straightening your right leg out. And in a little waterfall pose, both legs can reach up towards the sky. You might need to shift and readjust where you have your block here so that you're well balanced and supported. <sighs> Just a really gentle inversion. And we'll be easing our way into Shavasana. No props required for this. Your feet can come back to the floor. You can move the block out of the way. And go ahead and take up some space. So a short but powerful practice. Notice where you feel this in your body and really notice what the internal dialogue sounds like. We're letting go of the need to work and to use any effort. Instead, we're fully resting here. Breathe a little bit deeper. Tiny little movements so that you're waking yourself back up. And you can extend your arms up overhead. We'll roll to the side. Use arm strength to carry you up into a seat. Sitting up tall here. Hands come together at the heart, Anjali Mudra. And we can close by chanting Om. Let's inhale to chant, breathe in. Om. 
Thank you so very much for doing this powerful vinyasa flow with me. I know there were a few challenges along the way, but hopefully it feels really good and gave you that boost of energy that you needed in a short period of time. Leave me a comment before you go. Make sure you subscribe and hopefully I'll practice again with you very soon.